Well, praise the Lord. Yeah. We're glad and thankful tonight that we can come back and visit with you for a little while. So we can tell you, Jesus loves you unconditionally. And I thank God for that tonight. I told somebody some time ago, they looked at me and they said, Earl, I've known you for a long time. And I really think a lot of you. I'd like to know you when you was young. I looked down and I said, you wouldn't have liked me. <laughs> <laughs> well, is it, and there's no use to the story about it. I, and so I, I, I'm glad that God's still God, that he knows how to turn you around, uh, remake you, and, and you can get up and lift up your hands because there's been a change. And I thank God tonight for the change. And so if you don't know the one that I'm talking about, his name's Jesus. Uh -huh. uh, I don't care how mean you are, how low down you've been, he can change you. And people will see the change. I didn't have to tell anybody that I got saved. They knew it when they saw me. They said, Earl, what happened to you? I said, well, the Lord got a hold of me. Well, I knew something happened. So you see, when the Lord gets a hold of you, he can turn you every way but loose. Amen. And he won't turn you loose. And you've got to go yourself. He won't let you go. And so I'm thankful for that tonight. I'm glad that I made it. I dedicated my life to God. I made a vow. I said, God, I'm here to stay. I've tried it a lot of times, and, and it seems like I couldn't make it. But I'm not leaving this time. I'm here to stay. Did I have any battles to fight? Yes. My, well, praise God. But you know, I learned how to pray. I, that's right. I learned how to pray. Yes, sometimes it took me all night. But it didn't make any difference. Because I had a determination that I was going to make it. And I've still got a determination. I'm going to make it. I look up every once in a while and I say, God, I, I don't know what's going to happen to all of this, all of these people, I, I young, and especially young people, because there's so many of them. My, they don't have no stay to them at anything. It doesn't make any matter what it is. They don't have no stay to them. They can't keep their mind on anything very long. I bet you know, I'm glad that God says, renew your mind. He says, don't be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. You see, I got my mind renewed. And whenever I got my mind renewed, then I was staying where I was at. I wasn't about to leave. I found out my, that God would bless me and my, it, it would make me swell up inside and just feel so good that I, I, I felt like that I, if I jumped one time, I just wouldn't come back, but gravity wouldn't let me go. And so here I am yet today. So I, I'm glad for the greatness of God. And if you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, you don't know what you're missing. Why? Because he, he gives you peace. That's right. He gives you peace. He gives you he gives you peace. This old world's in a turmoil. If you don't think so, just turn your TV on, begin to listen to the election news. You really see what kind of a turmoil that it's in. I, I, but I, I can tell you one that can turn it around if we allow him to, if we would trust him, if we would ask him. You see, that's what he tells us to do. He says, ask. Ask. And he said, if my people, they call themselves by my name. And I believe today if the people of God, mm -hmm. the people of God would really get down to business with God, God could turn this all of this stuff around. And it's all just stuff. That's all that it is. Just a lot of wind. But mine, if they get an opportunity to take the advantage of the people, they do it. And so I'm glad today that I'm a child of God. God doesn't take the advantage of nobody. Nobody. And so you see, he don't force you to do anything. 
There's a lot of times you wish you had of, but he doesn't force you to do it. He wants you to do it on your own free will. I'm willing to walk the last mile on the way. And so today, my, my, we'd like to pray with you, pray for you, that God would reach down and touch you. You would give him your life, my, and he would bless you. And you could walk down life's highway with joy in your soul. That's right, joy in your soul. Peace in your heart. Because that's what he wants to do. So we want to send our broadcast out this evening to uh, those that stand in need. There's lots of sickness. I want to remember Crystal. Uh, she's on her mind, in her heart. I want to remember Edie. My, she got home today from the hospital. Betty had a, a, a brother that was in the hospital last week. He got home. Uh, and so I, I thank God for it. Uh, I've got a, nie a niece down in Louisiana. I talked to my sister yesterday, and she's got cancer. She's in her late 30s, early 40s. I'm not just sure just how old she is. Uh, but she just took her last chemo treatment just a week or so ago. She don't go back to the doctor until uh, the 10th uh, of November. But she's never quit going to church. She takes care of the, the treasury at, at the church where she attends. And she was there a week or so ago. Well, it was this past Sunday, a week ago, that her and her husband went, and she was in that back in the hallway greeting everybody and, and with a smile, and everybody knows she's sick. But they didn't have any idea what was wrong with her. And there was a man sitting on the front pew. Then my niece's husband was sitting. It was kind of a, an octagon. And he was sitting over on the right-hand side. And this man was sitting on the left. And he said, while he was sitting there, looking around, he said, God spoke to him. And he said the power of God hit him. And he said he sat there and he started crying. He didn't have any idea what was going on. He said, God, I just don't quite understand. But the Lord spoke to him and he says, shut your eyes. He said, God, I, I can't do that. Everybody think I come to church to sleep. And the Lord spoke to him again. He says, shut your eyes. So he said, Okay. So he shut his eyes, and when he shut his eyes, the Lord says, what did you see? He said, Lord, all I seen was a man sitting over there. And he said, that's all I seen. The Lord said, open up your eyes. So he opened up his eyes, and he looked around, and that was still all that he seen was that man sitting there. And as he sat there, he said, I was sitting there praying, and, and I seen this young lady blonde come walking down the, uh, the aisle and she come in and she sat down over there beside of that man. And he says, whenever she sat down there, the Lord said to him again, close your eyes. He said, but Lord, the Lord says, close your eyes. He said, so I closed my eyes and I sit there. And he said, I just cried like a baby. I didn't know what was happening. I didn't know what was going on. Anything like that had never happened to me before. And directly the Lord said, okay, open up your eyes. Or while he was there, uh, the Lord said to him, he said, well, what did you see? He said, I didn't see nothing but that man sitting over and that woman come down and sat beside him, I suppose, to his wife. He's, the Lord spoke to him and he says, I want you to take that woman a message for me and he says are you sure he said, the Lord says yes I'm sure he said okay he said not right now after church after service so he said we sat there through service and he says of course I sat there and I cried and I prayed and I was saying God what do you want me to say he says you just tell her what I tell you 
whenever you talk to her. He said, after a while, when church was over, he said everybody was leaving. So the young lady got up and went back out through the hallway and said, I looked at her husband and said, where did your wife go? And, and, and he says, she's back in, the, in, in her office. says she's the treasurer of the church. He said, I got to talk to her. And her husband said, okay, come and go with me. So he took her back, took him back to the door to her office and, and they knocked on the door and, and she came to the door and she, he, her husband said to her, this man wants to talk to you a minute. And she said, okay. But he said, she said, well, I was standing there looking at him. I wondered, well, what does he want? What's he got to talk to me about? And she said, I, I take care of all the money in the church, so I thought maybe that he wanted to find out, get a record on his tithing, or maybe he wanted to raise his tithing. He wanted to give more. But I, I didn't really know. And so she said, I, went, I just invited him in and showed him a chair and said, sit down. And he said, he sat down, said he looked over at me and he says, God gave me a word for you. He said, I don't have any idea what's going on. He said, I never noticed you before today. But he says, God told me to tell you, you're healed. You are healed. And she said, then I told him what was wrong. And she said, I cried and he cried. But she said, I'm just believing God. I'm just believing God. You see, God works in mysterious ways. Mama, I know there's a lot of people who don't believe in healing, but honey, I suppose that's the reason they're not healed. I believe in it, and I've been healed a lot of times of a lot of different things. God's healed me. <laughs> well, I praise God tonight for His mercy and for His grace. Well, I, I just wanted to share that with you. I know it took up a little bit of time, but nevertheless, it's all God's time. Amen. Somebody told me the other day anyway, said, Earl, never seen anybody like you. Said, you come on the air preaching and you go off preaching. I looked down and I said, that's my life. You know, if there's nobody else around, I preach to my wife. <laughs> and so you just pray that God would have his way in our hearts. And if you're sick, don't give up. I know a healer. I'm not a healer, but I know one. Yeah, bless his name. And his name's Jesus. And he's just as able tonight as I pray. I'm going to stretch my hands right towards that TV. And as I pray, I'm going to ask God to reach out and touch you. No, I'm not going to call your name because there's too many. And I don't know what they are. But God knows exactly where you're at. And if, you say, if you've got misery, pain, sickness, reach out and take it. Take it. Take it. You see, you've got to take it. God, don't force it on you. You've got to take it. You've got to ask for it. So we just praise God. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we call upon you tonight, we thank you. From the depths of our soul. God, just for the opportunity to share with others the good things of God. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would reach out. God, you'd save the lost, heal the sick, yeah. open blinded eyes. And Father, a special prayer tonight, God. You'd reach down and touch Crystal. God, you've touched her a lot of times. And your hands is not short. You're not slack concerning your promises. And so I'm asking you today, God, to intervene in her life. Father, you'd touch Edie. And Heavenly Father, you'd reach down tonight and touch Sue. God, she's got sugar. But God, 
Jesus is our great high physician. He's the one that's able to heal and to set the captives free, to deliver people from the sickness, the heartache, and the sorrow. And so I'm asking you tonight, God, just to touch them in a mighty way. Father, that they would just have the faith to reach out and say, it's mine. I'm taking it. My mind, we realize, God, that the devil don't give up easy. And so I'm praying today, God, you'd intervene in their hearts and their lives. Heavenly Father, bless those, God, that have stood behind us, those that have stood with us, those that have prayed and those that have paid. Heavenly Father, that you would bless them, God, multiply them. <laughs> Heavenly Father, they would be able to do more for the glory of God, for the furtherance of the gospel of Christ. Father, bless the service tonight. Have your way in our hearts, and we'll praise you for it in the name of Jesus. Well, praise God. All right, they're going to come and sing for us. Hey, hey. Ah, you can. <laughs> Brother Earl, nice to be here. I want to thank the Lord for giving us a nice blessing up at that little country church Amen. we was at. Praise God. The presence of Christ was there because he came out to worship with the ones that loved him. Praise God. I love that two, uh, two day that we had there. We get the boys and girls over here in the Key of A. Uh, tell a little bit about how we used to be before we born again. Yeah. I was living far from Jesus in the path of sin and shame when I looked up and he looked down. I had never sought salvation and I never trusted in his name till I looked up and he looked down when I looked up. And he looked down Oh, one of these days you know I'm heaven bound When I looked up And he looked down Oh, one of these days you know I'll wear a crown My ways have been lighter ever since I've changed my ways till I looked up and he looked down. Now I'm walking in his favor and I trusted in his name till I looked up and he looked down when I looked up and he looked down. Oh, one of these days you know I'm heaven bound. When I looked up and he looked down Oh, one of these days, you know, I'll wear a crown When I looked up and he looked down Oh, one of these days you know I'm heaven bound When I looked up and he looked down Oh, one of these days you know I'll wear a crown Oh, one of these days you know I'll wear a crown His name. Glory. Praise the Lord. Life has been so good, I can't complain. When I'm down, God gives me strength to 
rise again. Yes. But I'm weary from the struggle <laughs> of it all. <laughs> yeah. So I listen. How I listen for his call. Heaven sound is sweeter all the time. It seems like lately it's always on my mind. Someday I'll leave this world behind. Heaven sound is sweeter all the time. Oh, it's hard to lose a loved one to the grave. But we have the blessing that Jesus gave. God's gonna wipe all the tears from our eyes. When we meet in that land beyond the sky, Heaven sound is sweeter all the time. Well, praise God. Praise God. Save like food lately. <laughs> it's always <laughs> on my mind. <laughs> Someday <laughs> I'll leave <laughs> this world behind. <laughs> Heaven sound is sweeter all the time. <laughs> Heaven sound is sweeter all the time. Amen. Praise God. We're, we're going to change the order of the service for a little while. We're going to sing another song. You pray. This is an old song. I love it. So you just pray that God would have his way in our hearts, our lives. It says, time has made a change. You listen to the words of it and see if you don't fit in there somewhere. Time has made a change since my childhood day. Many of my friends have gone away. Some I never more in this life shall see. Time has made a change in me. Time has made a change in the old home place. Time has made a change in each smiling face And I know my friends can plainly see Time has made a change in me In my childhood day I was well and strong I could climb the hill sides all day long. I am not today what I used to be. Time has made a change in me. Time has made a change in the old home place. Time has made a change in his smiling face, and I know my friends can plainly see. Time has made a change in me when I reach my home in that land somewhere. Meet my friends that wait me over there. Free from pain and care, 
light shall ever be. Time has made a change in me. Time has made a change in the old known place. Time has made a change in his smiling face. And I know my friends can plainly see. Time has made a change in me. Well, praise God. <laughs> you think about it. When I reach my home in that land somewhere, meet my friends that waits me over there. Yeah. Free from pain and care, I shall ever be. Time has made a change in me. I thank God today for that time, for that change that time has made. Yeah. Mama, no, I'm not only older, but I'd like to think that I was a little wiser. I'd like to think that I've learned a little more as I've traveled down life's highway. But I thank God most of all for the spiritual change that time has made in my life. Why? Because I, as I said a while ago, you know, I, when I was younger, I, I was kind of wild. Uh, but you know, God knows how to change you. Yes, he knows how I, I, to take that away from you. Yes, and so I just praise God for his mercy and for his grace. And I, 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 I talk to a lot of people. You know, they say, well, now, Earl, you, you sure get excited. I said, yes, sir. I've got something to get excited about. Why? Uh, well, we live in a pr pretty decent little house uh, uh, down there in Braxton County. Yes, uh, but yeah. you know, Jesus said, I'm going to go and prepare a place for you. Uh -huh. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'm coming back. Uh, you see, I am whenever he comes back, uh, I want to, to bid this old world adieu uh, because I'm ready to leave. Uh, but you know, the place that he's got prepared uh, makes what I'm living in now a clapboard shack. Well, ha, and so I, I praise God that God is still God. Uh, why? Because he said, it's never entered into the heart of man. Uh, a man can't even imagine uh, am I, the things uh, uh, that God has prepared for us. Uh, and so if you don't know this man called Jesus, I don't know of a better time to get acquainted with him than right now. I tell you, honey, he loves you. I don't care how unlovable you are, he still loves you. That's right, there's a lot of people uh, that's unlovable. Uh, they won't hardly let anybody love them. But honey, God loves you anyway. In spite of yourself, God still loves you. And he'll save you if you would just ask him to. Uh, but if you don't ask him to, he doesn't force himself onto nobody. He tells us, uh, uh, yea, though I stand at the door and knock, uh, if you open, he says, I'll come in. But if you don't and give him the invitation, uh, he's not coming in. Uh, I, know, I know there's a lot of high-pressure salesmen uh, uh, today that travels through the country, not as much as what has been in the past, uh, uh, but they used to. My, if they could get their foot in the door, honey, they'd almost be in the house before they left. Uh, uh, and so you see, uh, God's not yeah. that way. Amen. He's not a high-pressured salesman. No, he's he is very meek and lowly. And he says, uh, I, if you'll just open the door, I'll come in and sup with you and you with me. <laughs> and so you see, Jesus loves you. And that's the reason uh, that he wants to go home with you. You see, he went home with Zacchaeus and the people uh, began to talk. Uh, well, he's going home with a sinner. Honey, God loves the sinners. He just don't love the sin, uh, but he loves the sinner. Yeah. How do I know? Because I was lost and undone uh, without hope. And I found out that God loved me even more than I could imagine. Uh, my, I 
And so you see, he's still a loving God today. And he loves you. He'll love you right out of your problems, your heartaches, uh, uh, your sorrow. Uh, and he'll uh, help you as you travel down life's highway. You see, that's the love of God. Well, our, our time's come and gone. And so uh, you pray for us and we'll be back next week. Father, in the name of Jesus, touch and bless uh, uh, those under the sound of our voice. Uh, save the lost, heal the sick, yeah. set the captives free. Uh, and we'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. It's our prayer until next week.